I love you just the way you are, now change. And they don't want to be changed. They want to be loved and appreciated for who you are. And so do you. Hi, I'm Dr. John D. Martini. You're part of a family. And there are times in the family where there are challenges and conflicts and defiance and different opinions. And it's frustrating at times, challenging at times, but it makes us grow. In this presentation today, I'd like to go down the, the journey of discussing how to reduce defiance and conflict within the family members by mastering the art of communication. That's really what the topic's about. So you might want to take some notes and get some writing paper or pens or something. And let's go down this journey. Every one of the family members in your family or extended family, you may have somebody living with you that's a friend or something, has a unique set of values and priorities. They're fingerprint specific. In fact, if you look carefully in your family, you'll see that you have a brother and sister in all probability, if you're not a sole child, that um, has a completely different set of values in you. You may be dedicated to organize and structuring and going in goals, and they may just go with the flow. Or you may be focused on metaphysics and philosophy, and they may be really grounded in science and engineering or something. These pairs of opposites are pretty notorious in the family. And with that, it adds some very good challenge to the idea of communicating. And sometimes what you think is important, they don't think is important and vice versa. So how do you effectively communicate with somebody that has maybe not the complete opposite, but close to it, in values and needs and this is what uh, you're facing every single day and not only in your family but even this extends some of the principles i'm going to share today is extends into your co-workers at work or your relationship in society and your own children when you have your own children someday so just know that everybody has a unique set of values set of priorities and whatever's highest on their values their set of priorities their hierarchy of values is what they're dedicated to. Their identity revolves around it. Their purpose is an expression of what's highest on their value. This is what they want to learn the most. And this is how they filter their reality accordingly. So whatever's most important to them, whatever's most meaningful to them, what's most fulfilling to them, most inspiring to them, most priority to them, is what their life is about. And yours is going to be unique to yours, your set of values. And your moms and dads, and everybody's going to show you love according to their set of values. So if your father is dedicated to education, like in my case, he's going to encourage education. Your mom may educate and inspire health. Some else, maybe grandma may tell you, well, when are you going to have a baby and when are you going to get married or something? Everybody's going to project their values onto you. And some of those values are going to be more meaningful than others and sometimes it's going to be frustrating. So how do you communicate in a way back to them where they're not resistant and they're not defiant and how do they communicate with you where you're not okay so here's the first thing you want to write you want to first identify what are the values of yourself and your family members if you've never taken the time to do that you really don't know who you're with if you don't know what they're dedicated to what they're what's most inspiring to them what they're most fulfilled by you don't know what their life's really about. And you may be projecting assumptions that they, they're living in the same values you have, but that's not the case. If you do, you'll end up frustrated. Finding out what their set of values are and what's prior to them is a, a crucial step in communication. Now, on my website, drdmartini.com, please take the time, if you haven't done it, and go online there and look up Determine Your Values. It's free, it's complimentary, and I would have you go through and do that on yourself. And do it maybe a week later and a month later and a quarter later to get an idea of what you're really, really demonstrating over all over the long haul, what your life is committed to, what's really important to you. Your life demonstrates your values. Your decisions are based on your values. Your perception, decisions, and actions are all based on your values. The hierarchy of your values dictates your destiny. And who you are is an expression of those values. 
So first go online and do that for yourself. Then you might go to your family members that you may have had some challenging communication with them and say to them, you know, I see that sometimes I'm not always respecting you. I'm not always listening to you. I'm not communicating effectively with you. And I found a tool that's online that may make me have more respect, appreciation, and communicate more effectively with you. I know that you're busy, but it would really mean a lot for me to be able to be able to communicate more effectively with you and to respect you. And if I if you did this exercise together, if we did this exercise and determine your values, it might help me appreciate what you're committed to. I think I'm projecting my my assumptions onto you and creating projections and expectations that are unrealistic and it's causing us conflict. And I don't want to be in conflict with you. You're my you're my brother or sister, or my mother, whoever it may be. If you approach it in a way where they're going to win out of it and they're going to be respected out of it, you might have them go through that value determination process themselves. And if you do it together, that's even greater. If not, they want to do it privately, that's okay. But then once they have that summary of what they value, there's a very powerful exercise you and they, if they're interested, can do. Even if they're not, you can do it. And that is take the top three most important priorities and values of their life and the top three of most important values of your life and ask this question, how specifically is what they're dedicated to, what's most important to them, what they're inspired by, what they spontaneously do, what their life revolves around, how is that helping me fulfill what I'm dedicated to, what's most inspiring to me and what's priority to me? If you can't see how what they're dedicated to is serving you, you're going to be self-righteously projecting your values onto them. And they're going to automatically get resistant and be defiant. And they're going to be, you just set yourself up for conflict. See, anytime you go above somebody and project your values onto somebody, you automatically get resistance. Anytime you go underneath them and sacrifice what's valuable to you to be with them, uh, you're going to get resistance. So what's going to happen is until you have an equal playing field, you're going to have miscommunication. If you're looking down on them and thinking your values are more important than theirs, you're going to be careless. If you're looking up at them, you're going to be careful walking on eggshells. But it's when you have them equal that you have caring, which keeps the rings on the fingers. And at that caring communication that's sustainable in relationships that reduces some of the conflict and defiance. People aren't going to be defined if you're communicating what you want to say in terms of what they want to hear. If it's helping them fulfill what they value, they'll turn around and help you fulfill what your value is. A lot of the conflict is based on these inequalities between family members. And what we do is we have a tendency to think our values are right and we get proud about our values and we expect others to live in those values and we create chaos. That's where most of the chaos is. Assumption that people are supposed to see the world through your eyes. That's not going to happen. One of the most unrealistic expectations you'll ever have is to expect somebody to live in your values or for you to live in theirs. It's not going to work. It just creates resistance. So take the time to find out what their top three values are. Take the time to find out what yours are and ask, how is their top value helping you fulfill yours? How is their second value helping you fulfill yours? The third value doing it. How does your values help them fulfill theirs? And sit down on a piece of paper and take the time to make the links. Because if you can see what they're dedicated serving you, it's amazing the difference. You'll have a different respect for them. You'll think before you speak. And think, imagine if you met somebody that was very, very respected, you respected highly, and it was really important. You would stop and think about what you were going to say before you spoke to them, because there's a deep respect for them. Well, if you can see how what their values help you fulfill yours, the respect level goes up. If you see them less than yours, you're going to talk down to them autocratically. If you see them way above you, you're going to sit there and sacrifice yourself for them. You become altruistically sacrificial if you put them on a pedestal. You become, in a sense, other sacrificing them for you if you become narcissistic and they're down in the pit. The pit. Putting people on pedestals of pits is what blocks communication. You got to put them in your heart. That's what caring is. That's what creates a sustainable dy- dynamic. A dialogue instead of alternating monologues where you're speaking, they're not listening, they're speaking, you're not listening. The moment you have the links between those values, And I've done this in thousands of people. The moment those links are made, the more links you make, 
the better the communication and the more respect for the communication and the higher the probability that you're going to communicate what you want to say masterfully in terms of what they want to fulfill. If you help them fulfill what they want to want to do in life, it helps you fulfill what you want to do in life. Now, the more links you make, if you sit down and write one or two links, it's not going to make much difference. I found that around 20 to 30 links per value. Oh, yeah, that takes some time. But the moment, if you don't learn this art of communicating into people's values, the frustration, the aggravation, the conflict, the dis, dissipation of energy, and the all the noise in the brain from all the conflicts is going to be way more costly in time than it is to take the time to make the links. How specific, the quality of your life is basically quite the questions asked. How specifically is what this individual, my family member, is dedicated to, what they're inspired by, what's most important, meaningful to them? How is it helping me fulfill what's most important to me? The more links you go one way and the more links you go the other way, how is what I'm dedicated to helping them fulfill what they're dedicated to? And take their top three and your top three and make links. I've sat down and helped people do links. We, we actually did a, a training program, a values training program in, in Japan one time. We had 33 pairs of people that didn't know each other. And we end up doing this exercise. And when they finished that, out of the 33 pairs, 27 of those pairs started doing business with each other. They never met each other before that. They started doing business. They had respect for each other, communication. There was dialogue. They both saw how what they're both dedicated to could serve each other. That is huge when it comes to a relationship in a family. Now, in addition to that exercise, making the links, the moment you see them as equals, you will think before you emotionally react and project. And then when you do that, that makes a huge difference because now you're in your executive center now and out of your amygdala. When you try to communicate from your amygdala, you miscommunicate, you go into gestural communication, then you go into anger. Anger and, and aggression is a byproduct. It's the lowest level of communication. It's the last resort for people that don't know how to communicate with their, their physical forms. That's why if you say something and you're not saying it in a way that people want to hear it, it's not helping them fulfill what they want in life. You start getting more animated gesturally and eventually you get angry. And that's because we go down into more primitive forms of communication because we don't master the art of communication. And that's why we get the defense. And the defense and defiance in our family members are not bad things. They're exactly what you need to get the lesson that you're not communicating from respect. You're communicating from an autocracy where you think that your values are right and theirs are wrong. And that's going to get you resistance. And it's defiance. That's a, You need that. You need the defiance and the conflict to give you feedback to let you know that you're narcissistically projecting an assumption that they're supposed to read your mind and supposed to be doing what you think is important instead of respectfully communicating what you value in terms of what they value. If you help other people fulfill their values and do it in a way where you're fulfilling yours doing it, you've got the game mastered. And it, I guarantee it makes a difference. I've seen parents learn how to do that and change the dynamic of their kids. Instead of labeling the kids defiant disorders, attention deficit, which are all symptoms of not knowing how to communicate, not respecting what's really valuable to that individual. This can occur for husbands and wives, any of the children, any human being that you ever have a communication with, this principle applies. So that's the first thing. And the second thing is to know that reflective awareness is the key to intimacy. If you want to have a close relationship with people, you have to realize that anything you're too proud or too humble to admit that you see in them inside yourself is going to block your communication. If you're looking down on them and think they're doing something you're too proud to admit to doing it, looking down, you're going to talk down to them. If you're sitting there and you're admiring them and you're sitting and minimizing yourself, you're going to talk up to them. Anytime you're too proud or too humble to admit what you see in others inside you, you've lost your intimacy, you've lost reflection, you've gone into deflection, and you're going to start miscommunicating. You don't have an, an equitable exchange and fair exchange available. So that's why I teach people uh, a method called the Demartini method in my program, The Breakthrough Experiences, where I usually teach. I have also a special training program to teach people how to ask a new set of questions to discover that whatever they see in others, they have inside themselves. And if they look down on it, what are the upsides? Questions to ask, what are the upsides? To calm it down, to bring it back in equilibrium. If you're up at it, what's the downsides? To bring it in equilibrium. 
the whole method is designed to help you master communication. And then when I've trained people on doing it at the Breakthrough Experience, people actually sit across from people that they've had major conflicts with. And when they get through with it, they're sitting there having a present moment with their heart open, grateful for the contribution they've made in their life. So the value determination process, the value communication application by making the links between values and the Demartini method are goal minds when it comes to mastering the art of communication. That's why I tell people to go to the breakthrough experience to get to learn that process. That is a God saving gift. I promise you. It's an amazing thing for the family. I mean, you, you, if you if you came there and watched what happens to family members that actually do it on each other, there's tears of gratitude and it changes their relationship to a new level. So if you're having defiance, if you're having conflict, if you're having miscommunication, please go back and watch this again, possibly. Listen to it more than once. Remember, the quality of your life is based on the quality of the questions you ask. How specifically is what they're dedicated to helping you fulfill what you're dedicated to? How is what you're dedicated to helping them fulfill what they're dedicated to? Answer that 30, 40, 50. Just keep answering that a hundred times. The time spent on that is insignificant compared to the time lost in all the miscommunications. Because sometimes you fester, you go to your room, you don't want to talk to them, you're wiped out for a few days. Uh, you don't want to, and, and all that energy is, is all byproduct of not knowing how to communicate. And then learning the Demartini method, which is a gold mine of opportunity for communicating and appreciating. I've been using it for over 30 something years, 36 years now, helping people resolve conflict and, and uh, help them appreciate and communicate and love people, have more reflective awareness. And it's simply a set of questions. And you can learn those questions, apply those questions and change your dynamics for the people you care about. So I just wanted to take some time to that to discuss that today and make sure that you contemplate that because remember nobody nobody has the same set of values in you if any two people are exactly the same one's not necessary and everyone wants to be loved and appreciated for who they are and who they are revolves around what they value most and if you can't see what they are and who they are is helping you fulfill yours you're going to want to change them i love you just the way you are now change and they don't want to be changed. They want to be loved and appreciated for you. And so do you. So the communication to the top values is a gold mine. And learning the Demartini method on how to ask questions to have reflective awareness. You can increase the, the intimacy and communication and reflection is absolutely a mind bending, changing system. I, I'm, it's an inspiring piece of work. I've seen it work so many times. You want to make sure you learn that and master that. And if this topic is even more intriguing to you and you'd like to go maybe a little further down it, besides coming to the break to experience learning the methods, both of those I teach in there, the value communication and the method. I also have a couple of CDs called Balancing Emotions, which could be very helpful in relationships uh, for the aftermath or maybe in advance, and also understand the family dynamics and also the mastering the art of communication. All three of those are online CDs that I've done that could be supplemental to what we did here that are more like one to two hour programs, not just 15, 20 minutes like this. But I just want to go down there and just seed that opportunity inside you. Just know that everyone wants to be loved and appreciated for who they are. If you want to know who they are, find out what their values are. The highest values is an expression of it. Find out how to communicate what you have as your highest value in terms of what they have. And I guarantee you, that master of that communication is a gold mine. It will change the relationships you have with the people you care about. And there's no reason why you have to have unnecessary conflict when you can take the skill and master it. The amount of energy it takes to master the skill is insignificant compared to the amount of energy you will spend in all those conflicts throughout your life. So this is Dr. Martini. Thank you for joining me for this special uh, little message and on communication and um, you know, transcending defiance and conflict in the family and mastering the art of communication. Uh, there's no reason why you have to have all that conflict unnecessarily. I look forward to seeing you at the next presentation. Mm -hmm.